So congratulations, you finished two courses. At this point, I think it's important to think about what are you gonna do next? Because you sort of know how to program. You're not like a super expert programmer, but I've known people that have gotten this much programming and it begins to change their lives. So let me give you some very specific suggestions as to what you should do next. First off, as I told you at the very beginning, one of my goals is for you to take more classes. I want you to actually take intro classes. Don't feel like you have to go take like this class and then an advanced class. That's actually almost the worst thing that you can do. Because unless of course you wished, was wished zoom through this class in a super hurry and you were done in like two hours, that's a different problem. But if you struggled, the next class you should take is another intro class. Some of those classes that I mentioned in the beginning, we have a bunch of them at University of Michigan, even another intro Python class. That's not a bad idea because you are at this point capable of writing a 25 line piece of Python code. You need to get to the point where you can competently write a thousand lines of code. And that's kind of when you start to be able to use this sort of in a professional situation. And so that next class, which is a first Python class, like this is the zero with Python class, the first Python class will teach you how to write it programs, let's just say around a thousand lines of code. And they're gonna show you things about Python that I kind of ignored as I went by because I'm just trying to teach you the basics and get you through to the starting point. This is the beginning of you learning to program, not the end. Now, I'm also a big fan of meeting people. There are Python meetups all around the world. There's an organization called Free Code Camp that has face-to-face -face meetings and new, new little code camps are coming together. And again, developing your skill as a programmer is not just a bunch of skills that you learn by yourself, but it's be, being embedded with people. And that's what leads to you getting a job, right? You think, oh, I get all these skills and like I sit in my house and I got all these skills and then someone comes to my house and says, you, here's your job. And the answer is no. The job part of a programmer is more about, well, it's about skills, but it's also about people. And that's why going places and and getting to know people who are programmers and understanding them. So you, another, if you can't find a code camp or a meetup, go to a Python conference. Yeah, you're a beginner, but you're gonna love it. You're absolutely gonna love it. Python conferences happen all over the world. Python is just a giant movement. There is a thing called Django Girls where they take beginners and teach them how to build web pages in Python. Awesome, right? Another way into this, and I, I've talked to a lot of students, is that you have a job and your job is X. Your job is a librarian. And you think, I'm not technical. But all of a sudden, you get a file, and that file has data from the checkouts and check-ins of books, and it's kind of messed up, and you'd like to find out, you know, by looking at this file, which books are checked out most often. And you think to yourself, hmm, that sounds strangely like a program that I wrote. I read a file, I parsed it into pieces, and I made a dictionary, and I counted things. Let me see if I can write a program kind of like that to handle this piece of data at work. And now you take a four-hour task of reading through this file and turn it into a four-hour task of writing a program and then a 10-second task of running that program. And then the next week when you get that same problem, that same file for the next week, it takes you 10 seconds. And guess what? You're now the library's programmer because you wrote... 120 lines of Python that can read the file that saves somebody four hours of work and on and on. So I've heard of a lot of students that just sort of evolve into programming as hobby at work, right? They're helping people at work. You might be a salesperson and you want to figure out the top three salespeople that you can't quite figure out from a spreadsheet. So you read that spreadsheet into Python, do some calculations, or you want to see who has done the best in the last three quarters and you can only in this one. So your salesperson, you write some Python, you get the answer to the question that you want and you're a hero or maybe you're a better salesperson, right? Um, and so those are all kinds of ways that you take a non-technical job and add technology to it and, and students do that all the time and it's just really, really awesome. Uh, what, the next kind of step up is to go get a new job go get a Python job. Wouldn't that be kind of cool if you, you know, you you were a cab driver and then you went and applied for a job and I, I see all these wonderful selfies that people take where they say, 
My first day on my job, a year ago, I didn't know anything about programming, and now I did all this, and now this is my first programming job. And I, I'm so excited. Whether I was part of it or not, I'm excited when people can change their job, because programming jobs usually are pretty well paid, uh, safe. Uh, you get to relax and use your brain rather than use your ha arms or hands or be a delivery person or whatever. Not that those are bad jobs. It's just I like programming jobs. Here's the problem. It is really difficult to just get with a beginning programming skills. It is difficult to get that first job. And, and let me explain why. It, it's, it's counterintuitive. Um, if you're a company and you want to post a job and then that job says, hi, I want to hire a new programmer and all they need to know is a little tiny bit of Python and we'll teach you everything else. Turns out a lot of jobs like that. But if they post that job, they're going to get like a thousand applications because there are so many people that want that job and have the skills because the skills aren't that big of a deal. A lot of people can get those, have those or can get those skills and they all apply. So guess what they do? They don't post those jobs. They post like a more senior job or whatever. And you might be sitting in a meetup somewhere just kind of listening. You've been going to it for a couple of months and you'll hear someone say, Man, we can't f find anybody. We can't hire anybody. There's nobody in the marketplace that knows, like, even the most basic Python stuff. I can't hire people. I could hire, like, five people. And you're sitting there going, like, hi, I'm Chuck. I know a little Python. And they're like, really? And you need a job? Like, why don't you come down on Tuesday? Let's have some lunch. And then on Friday, you got a job. Now, there were thousand people in your city that wanted that job, but they were afraid to post it because all thousand would apply for it, but you were the one at the meetup, and you were the one that overheard the mention. So that's how a lot of beginning programming jobs work, is you get to know somebody, and then they don't have to talk to a thousand people. They can see you that you're coming to the meetup. They can see that you, you know, heard you talk a little bit about Python. You kind of know what you're doing. You already passed the interview, right? So that to me, that getting that first job is extra difficult, and this is why I'm so, am so obsessed with you meeting people and going places. Go places that you're comfortable, like meetups and PyCon, Free Code Camp, Django Girls. But whether you get a job or not, if you still don't have a job yet, keep learning, right? Keep learning. Learn, learn more about Python. Learn something about data mining. Learn something about natural languages. Learn something about databases. Learn how to build a web page you know, with Django or something. Learn a new programming language. Don't just learn Python. Because what you will find is that you now have this place to start learning. And as you grow, then you become more and more valuable in your current job. And you become more and more qualified for other jobs. Because the world isn't all Python. It isn't all Python and dictionaries and counting. And so... You know, if you go learn PHP, and maybe in your city there aren't that many PHP Python jobs, and there are PHP jobs, now you got yourself a job. Or you maybe learn some web design or accessibility or how to build uh, legally uh, appropriate websites for uh, people with disabilities. So the more you learn, the better you are. And the pieces just start to knit together. And then, then you're moving towards being more of a senior person, more of an architect, more of a designer. So don't stop learning. Use this course as your starting point. And I look forward to hearing how it all turns out for you.